musicians there. There was a band called Bell Cafe, and it, it ended up over the years that all of these other musicians lived there as well. But just this sort of like this sense of the time that Williamsburg was was young, and it was the, it was sort of when people people were going there because they actually couldn't afford to go anywhere else, and it was kind of cool. But there was like there was like two restaurants, and they weren't very good, you know, and. Uh, the, the, the sense of why people were there was because they wanted to be creative and they needed a space to do it in. It was like old school New York. Like that's what it was. That's why so many neighborhoods in New York came to be because people went there because there was actually space and it was cheap and you could set up a drum kit and rock out or, or like throw paint all over the place to do whatever you want. It sounds totally cliche, but it's actually kind of true. Like that's what it was like. There was lots on the slate before they could get down to the serious work. Next up was the photo session for the album cover with Norman Wong, the man with the golden eye. These shots would also be used for the hurricane of promotion that would accompany the album's release, once they could figure out how to finish it. during the photo session that the legendary Electric Lady Studios had been secured for the band, and the equally legendary John O'Manny was available and very excited to do the mix. That was the good news. The bad news was that there was only a handful of sessions to make it happen. It was certainly go time for metric. Right, where were we? New York City, yes. Eighth and Broadway, Electric Lady Studios. Everyone was hoping and praying that this would finally be the place for completion and perfection. Okay, my next comment was um, when the vocal comes in and the what it is and where it stops, I feel like just at the beginning, it gets a bit swamped. Okay. Did you have that? And I really, I, I'm totally cool with being disagreed with on this because I, you achieve that like. I didn't feel that at all. Okay, so it may just be. I feel like you're, I feel like you're nice and fucking clear. Yeah, and I feel like there's this the huge thing around you, yeah. and you are so right there. That's such a great place to work. Like, Electric Lady is just reminds you why you want to make music. It gets confusing, you know. So many um, lame studios. So many sterile environments. Like well, that was built by, Jimi it was Hendrix. designed by Jimi Hendrix, right? Yeah. Like he kind of, this was his sort of... Thing, uh, yeah, and it's really stayed, you know, it's not a museum piece. It's really functional, and Outcast were working in the room next to us at wow. one point, and Ryan Adams were, was there. One, the guy that mixed our, mixed our record, is, his name is John O'Manny, and he's, he's been around forever with us. Like, he helped us mix Girl and Blow Away, and... 2001, and yep. he's he, you know, co-produced Emily's record, and he's been around for pretty much everything we've done. And um, he's kind of like he's kind of like our closer, you know. He's like the relief pitcher that we call. Yep. And some, you know, some projects we call him, you know, with one out in the ninth, and some projects we call him in the seventh, and yep. we're in, we're in a bit of shit, you know. Yep. And it felt like on this one, we just knew we needed saving. Just the first one? Because I could almost no, bring I them all up. No, I think all of them, personally. Maybe like, the first one a bit and the rest of them A little less. bit less, because, yeah, I didn't notice. Sure. I don't know how to, the best way to, to achieve that, but... He was involved in the early days with this record, but we were just all in such strange places. It just needed... You know, I had to go to Argentina, and everybody had to do what they had to do. And the fact that he came back at the end, I think, really... When he sense. stepped in, it was kind of... You know, he was kind of like, yeah, sure, oh my God, I didn't even know you guys were close to finishing or whatever. And he kind of stepped in and was like, oh, okay, this is, you know, possibly a little a little hairier than normal. And then, you know, by by the end of last night, you know, where he was saying he's actually, he's actually never spent, I don't think he said, I think he said he's never spent this long mixing a record in his entire career. I can't really tell you what I'm doing. 
tell. I thought the fourth one was just maybe here loud now, but the rest of it, like... Fine. I okay. trust your judgment on I think you know what we're trying to accomplish. Yeah. And... Did you get that? Is that not too much? I, I feel like that's, like, my that's favorite thing. That's, like, your favorite thing? thing. Yeah, the first, and the first couple are, I'm cool with. And then the fourth one got it. A little out of hand. Yeah, yeah, just whatever, whatever, keep it in the track okay. and re read. But it's just, when it feels like the end of the, end of the song, end of it doesn't have to go anywhere, you know, it's just, or yeah. it goes everywhere. Any professional mix engineer in the business, the minute I started talking about needing to plug in a guitar amp, they would have been like, okay, well, session's over. You guys call me in a month when you got your shit together and you're ready. The editing process is supposed to long be over, you know? But apparently we're a band of freaks and everything we do is completely chaotic. The thing to listen for, because I'm one of the original dudes, right. is what was in my, my mind. My last thing is about getting the date. Yeah, yeah. I just wanted it to be a little bit more. Thank you so much. Cool. The session was productive, but something was still not right. Perhaps faced with a multitude of choices, the band was still feeling a bit overwhelmed. They seemed to be searching for the clarity of the song, the essence of the song, and nobody was exactly sure how to get there. You know, when the four of us all in a room together, it's like, it's, it's, it can be really hard to actually have one clear, coherent thought. It's like, really, can be totally insane energy. And, uh, I mean, I guess that's kind of what I love about it, but it, at other times it just, it does seem a little like, holy shit, man, I need to go, I need to go to the woods for a week and just like decompress after this madness. So Bucky, with the, you know, the sessions at, at Electric Ladyland and with, uh, you know, Jules and Jimmy and uh, Josh, uh, you know, it's pretty intense for these guys and they only have a few sessions left. So what, what uh, you know, how's, uh, how is Emily, uh, Emily Haynes, how is she holding up? What was going on with her? I think we got into the attitude of being like, we gotta go, 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 because, uh, you know, otherwise, we just couldn't afford to sit around, basically. So, this is the first record that we that we actually accomplished something enough that we could take our time and really write the way that we had, you know, it's pretty, pretty common for bands that your first record you spend your whole life writing right. and then every record after that you spend whatever period of time in, in between right. so we really felt like for this album it was so important that we all take the time to get our lives in order deal with our personal existence as human beings and and get back to a kind of writing that isn't just based on touring we did all these different stages right like we went to um, north of seattle this farmhouse and that was the beginning but i, I uh, yeah we went to that barn <laughs> And that, that was like, fuck, that was like a year and a half ago we started, you know? Yeah. And then, and then, I don't know, so a couple songs came out of that, but most of it came from, I went to Buenos Aires and I started writing on guitar. And I came back with like, I don't know, seven or eight songs, and then we had already had like four or five. A couple of those were ones that Jimmy wrote. He writes these like amazing, I don't know how to describe it, he like writes the whole song basically. And then I, and, but it's, it's like I say to him, I need this thing, and he understands what I mean, and he gives it to me, and then I can write on top of that. So there are a couple of instances of that. You know, in that time, the four of us were just talking about the best way to proceed, and we came up with the idea of making the record with Gavin Brown, because he's in Toronto, and Jimmy had bonded with him, and we, we've started in January with Gavin at Giant Studios in Toronto. And then we finished finished. <laughs> We've had trouble finishing. Yeah. I don't know, we had this timeline in our heads that was artificially created. I don't know what, where we got it from, but we just, there's, we were falling back into that problem the band has always had of rushing everything, you know? Okay. We were supposed to come and mix in New York with this one guy. It didn't happen. This is all common. This happens to every band, whatever. It didn't happen. Went to Vancouver. It was the totally wrong vibe. Um, you know, not the place for us to have our baby basically is what we all came to like yeah i mean that's that is the thing is it now coming to new york now feels like for the band coming home it's really it's weird uh but i suppose i suppose it makes sense actually it's where we started and this record you know encapsulates all the progress the band has made it's just like sort of it's the most holistic you know it's just four people right <laughs> like, definitely a band that just tours forever playing the same music, right. becoming a cartoon character, like this is not